In this video, we'll be solving this differential linear system. Um, I'm going to start by writing it as a matrix equation. And then I'm going to diagonalize the matrix. In the last example, the matrix was diagonalized and we could see, was diagonal. And so we could see how to solve it. So we'll diagonalize, solve the one with diagonal matrix, and then use it to solve the original problem. All right, so this is the method you should use whenever you have a system like this. You should always diagonalize A and then solve for the system with a diagonal matrix and then go back to your original system. All right, so let's start. All right, so my y prime is y1 prime y2 prime. We said that was y1 plus y2 um, for y1 minus 2y2. And so that's 1, 1, 4 minus 2 times y1, y2. Let's just double check. Yep, that works. All right, so your matrix A is the matrix 1, 1, 4 minus 2. And so that's the matrix that I need to diagonalize in B. To diagonalize a matrix, I'm going to need to find its eigenvalues, I'm going to need to find a basis for each eigenspace, and hopefully, because I have a 2 by 2, I will be able to find two linearly independent eigenvectors, and in that basis, the matrix will be diagonal. So the characteristic polynomial of A is the determinant of this matrix. I'm going to get 1 minus x minus 2 minus x minus 4. So I get x squared plus 2 minus 1, so plus x minus 2 minus 4. So I get x squared plus x minus 6, and that factors as 2 and 3. I'm going to take plus 3 minus 2. And so my eigenvalues, should I check x squared plus 2x minus, yeah. So my eigenvalues will be the zeros of this polynomial, so I will get two different eigenvalues. I'll get 2 and minus 3. And at this moment, I'm happy. I'm happy because I have two different eigenvalues, and that guarantees that I have a diagonalizable matrix. So all I need is to find an eigenvector for either. So for lambda, uh, for both, sorry, not either. So for lambda equals 2, a minus 2i would be minus 1, 1, 4 minus 4, which reduces to 1 minus 1, 0, 0. So I will have xy equals s. I have a free variable here, so x and y are both s. So I get 1, 1, s. So my first eigenvector is 1, 1. For lambda equals minus 3, I'm going to look at a minus minus 3i. Don't have a anymore, so let me go back. So that gives me 4, 1, 
four, one. Perfect. That reduces to one, one fourth, zero, zero. Again, I should always have at least one um, free variable. In this case, the second one is free. So I'll have xy equals 2 minus a fourth s and s. So I get minus a fourth 1s. Now I could take minus 1 fourth 1, but since I don't like fractions all that much, um, I can just take s equals 4, that's going to be a slightly longer vector, but it's still in the eigenspace and it's still a generator. So I'm going to take the eigenvector for minus 3, I'm going to take s equals 4, I'll get 4 or minus 4, let me check just so, yeah, just 4, um, let me take minus 1, 4. So my basis of eigenvector will be 1, 1, minus 1, 4. That means my change of basis matrix from the standard matrix to this one will be 1, 1, minus 1, 4. And my diagonal matrix will have the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So that's 2, minus 3, 0, 0. fresh in your mind, but maybe you don't remember this. We now know that D, this diagonal matrix, is P inverse AP. Alright, so that entire problem could have been in section nine about diagonalizing matrices. Um, the next part will bring back differential equations. So in C, I had to solve for U, which was PY. All right, so let's write back the original system. We had that y prime was equal to a y. So now I want to go from this to a system about u. So in this, let me isolate a. a, I'll bring p inverse on that side, it's going to turn into p. I'll have D, P inverse. 